Season 1 of The Sopranos introduces the DeMeo crime family of New Jersey. With family head Eckley DeMeo in prison, the current acting boss of the family is Jackie April. As Jackie's health deteriorates due to a terminal stomach cancer diagnosis, he entrusts his business responsibilities to his childhood friend Tony Soprano. Tony is a captain or capo in the mafia, leading a crew of friends and fellow made men. Polly Walnuts is an impulsive and smooth-talking enforcer, Sal Big Pussy Bompancero runs the local auto shop, and Silvio Dante is a loyal confidant who owns the Bada Bing Strip Club, a frequent meeting spot for Tony's crew. Tony also has an advisor named Hesh Rabkin, a wealthy loan shark and record producer who worked with Tony's father. Also working for Tony is his nephew by marriage, Christopher Moltisanti. Tony had idolized Christopher's now-deceased father, Dickie, as a child and looked at Christopher as a quasi-son. After Jackie April dies of stomach cancer, Tony and his uncle, Corrado Jr. Soprano, become at odds for who will become the new acting boss. Although Tony relents and allows Junior to be named the family's new head, he still makes moves behind his uncle's back to ensure his future succession. In turn, Junior is constantly at odds with Tony and schemes with his right-hand man Mikey on ways to take down his nephew. One of the many disagreements between Junior and Tony comes when Junior wants to execute a former associate at the Vesuvio restaurant which is owned by Tony's childhood friend, Artie Bucco. When Tony realizes Junior won't back down from his plan, he has Silvio burn Vesuvio down so the murder can occur there, and Artie can collect the insurance money to rebuild. Meanwhile, Christopher and his fellow drug addict friend Brendan begin hijacking trucks on Junior's payroll prompting Mikey to execute Brendan and threaten the same to Christopher. Causing more trouble for Tony is when he gets tipped off by a corrupt cop that a member of his crew is a rat. Tony's suspicions eventually fall into his best friend Pussy, who declares his innocence before mysteriously disappearing. At home, Tony Soprano keeps his business affairs a secret from his family. His wife Carmela is aware of Tony's job, but has an understanding with her husband to never know the details of his violent and illegal activities. Carmela also chooses to ignore Tony's repeated infidelities, including his relationship with his young Russian mistress, or Gumar, Irina. Meanwhile, Tony's children, high school senior Meadow and rebellious teenager AJ, are reaching an age where it becomes impossible for Tony to keep his role in the Mafia a secret. Tony also has a fractured relationship with his mother Livia, whose years of emotional abuse have greatly scarred Tony. This also leads to Tony feeling more protective and loving toward the most innocent of creatures, like babies or animals, especially a family of ducks that make a home in his pool. After he begins suffering from fainting spells and panic attacks, Tony begins seeing a therapist named Dr. Jennifer Melfi, who helps Tony realize the negative effects his mother has had on his mental health and the toll his life of crime was truly taking. Tony begins developing romantic feelings for Melfi, all the while having to keep their meetings a secret, knowing that his life could be in danger if word got out and he was deemed a rat. After Tony is forced to put his ailing mother in a retirement home, the spiteful Livia grows close to the petty Junior, and the two conspire to exact their grievances against Tony. After learning that Tony is seeing a therapist, Junior has Mikey hire a pair of hitmen to assassinate him, but the attempt goes wrong and Tony escapes with only minor injuries. The FBI then reveal to Tony that Junior and Livia were behind the failed hit hoping to win Tony over to their side as an informant. Tony refuses and plots his own revenge. Tony has Mikey murdered, but before Junior and the rest of his men can be dealt similar fates, they are arrested by the FBI due to a stock fraud scam. Junior is offered a lesser sentence if he confesses to Tony being the de facto leader of the family, but the petty and prideful Corrado refuses. In Season 2 of The Sopranos, Junior is under house arrest while awaiting his trial. And while he agrees to claim leadership of the New Jersey crime family to take the heat from the feds, it is now Tony Soprano who is the true leader. As the new boss, Tony makes an uneasy peace with Junior, murders Junior's man Philly for spreading gossip about the failed assassination attempt, and completely cuts ties with his mother due to her betrayal. This is made much more difficult when his erratic sister Janice returns home and has her own conflicting opinions on what should be done about Livia and her assets. As the new acting boss, Tony names Silvio his consigliere and places Polly in charge of their crew. 
After a business trip in Italy, Tony returns home with a new enforcer named Furio. And just as suddenly as he disappeared, Pussy returns, explaining his disappearance was due to back surgery and a Puerto Rican Gumar, though Tony still has his suspicions. But heavy is the head that wears the crown, as Jackie April's brother Richie is released from prison and reassumes control of his old crew, then quickly begins questioning Tony's actions as boss. Richie repeatedly undermines Tony publicly, and even begins working with Junior in secret to sell cocaine, despite Tony's disapproval. But Tony can't do much to resolve his Richie April problem, as the man soon becomes engaged to Tony's sister Janice. As AJ begins acting out at school, Meadow prepares to move out for college, and his marriage to Carmella grows more strained, Tony's stress continues to tear him down. Despite the dangers having Tony as a patient posed, and even after he makes many threats and sexual advancements toward her, Dr. Melfi decides to continue seeing Tony as a patient. But this weight begins to take a toll on Melfi, prompting her to see her own therapist named Elliot. Meanwhile, Christopher Moltisanti is attempting to make moves to become a made man in the Mafia. While trying to become a successful screenwriter, Tony has Christopher become the SEC compliance officer of a local investment firm in order to run a highly lucrative pump and dump scam. Working under Christopher are two new opportunistic lackeys, Matthew and Sean, who become obsessed with winning the respect of Tony. As Christopher's new responsibilities grow, he begins to fall into a heavy drug addiction, causing him to frequently lash out at his girlfriend Adriana. Eventually, Tony convinces Christopher to get his act together, and he ditches his screenwriting dreams, vows to kick his drug habit, and proposes to Adriana. Realizing that working under Christopher was getting them nowhere, Matthew and Sean devise a plan to instead earn the respect of the antagonistic Richie April. And so the two lackeys attempt to murder Christopher. During the shootout, Christopher is shot three times and left for dead, Sean is killed, and Matthew escapes to inform Richie of what he'd done. Richie, knowing the retribution Tony would be after for the hit on his nephew, furiously chases Matthew away. Christopher survives the attack, while Tony and Pussy track down Matthew and kill him. Despite his continued loyalty to Tony, Richie continues to feel slighted by the business and money he receives for his work. Encouraged to take matters into his own hands by Janice, Richie approaches Junior with a plot to once again attempt to murder Tony. Junior refuses and instead tips Tony off. But before Tony can take action against Richie, Janice gets revenge of her own. Tired of being abused by her new fiancé, Janice grabs a gun and shoots Richie dead. Tony then helps his sister cover up the murder. As the season comes to a close, Tony's worst fears about his friend Pussy are confirmed when he finds proof that he was working as an FBI informant. With no other choice, a remorseful Tony, Polly, and Silvio take Pussy out on a boat and murder him dumping his body into the ocean. In season three of The Sopranos, Tony grows more trusting of his uncle Junior, following the tip-off about Richie's attempted hit. Tony grows concerned for his uncle when Junior discovers he has cancer, and his day-to-day -day needs are now being met by a loyal soldier named Bobby Bacala. As Junior's cancer goes into remission, Livia Soprano dies from a stroke, leaving Tony extremely conflicted about his emotions. And Tony isn't the only Soprano struggling with his mental health. AJ continues to get into trouble at school, eventually leading to his expulsion. As Tony contemplates sending AJ to military school, his son begins experiencing severe panic attacks. Tony ditches the military school plans and blames himself for his son's struggles. At work, Philly Parisi's twin brother Patsy joins Tony's crew, and Christopher finally becomes a made man, serving on Polly's crew. With his new money and power, Christopher opens a club with Furio and makes Adriana the manager. This pulls Adriana away from her hostess job at Vesuvio, upsetting an obsessed Artie. Tired of Artie's wandering eye, his wife Charmaine files for divorce. Meanwhile, Polly begins to feel bitter at Tony's seeming favoritism toward his nephew, and begins taking his frustrations out on Christopher, demanding more money from his cut in Christopher's ventures, and repeatedly humiliating him publicly. This eventually comes to a head when Polly and Christopher are stranded in the frozen Pine Barrens after a hit gone wrong, and the two decide to bury the hatchet. Meanwhile, mobster Ralph Cifaretto returns to New Jersey after an extended stay in Florida, 
Despite being a top earner for Tony, Ralph is brash, impulsive, and violent, causing him to be passed over as the new captain of the April crew. When the new April captain Gigi dies of a heart attack, Tony reluctantly places Ralph in charge. Ralph then begins a relationship with Rosalie April, the widow of Jackie April, and becomes a quasi-mentor for Jackie's son, Jackie Jr. This worries Tony, as Ralph is a terrible influence and doesn't want Jackie Jr. getting involved in the family business. This becomes an even bigger worry for Tony when Jackie Jr. and Meadow begin dating. As Ralph leads Jackie Jr. toward a life of crime, causing him to drop out of college, Tony steps in to try to set Jackie Jr. straight. Unfortunately, Jackie Jr. is too far gone, and he robs a card game run by the mob with his friends. The robbery quickly turns into a shootout, with Jackie barely making it out alive. A disappointed Tony is resigned to Jackie's fate, and gives Ralph the go-ahead to have his surrogate son killed. And so Ralph sends his soldier Vito Spatafore to murder Jackie and stage it as a drug deal gone wrong. The season comes to a close at Jackie Jr.'s funeral. As Jr. emotionally sings to those in mourning, Meadow grieves Jackie's death, Ralph distances himself from Rosalie and begins a relationship with Janice, and Tony Soprano embraces his family. In Season 4 of The Sopranos, the boss of the New York crime family, Carmine Lupertazzi, is pulling back due to his old age, giving his underboss, Johnny Sack, more responsibility. This seems like good news for Tony, who has a solid working relationship with Johnny. Unfortunately, Polly Walnut, serving a short prison sentence for a gun charge, has grown jealous of Tony's apparent favoritism toward Christopher, and begins positioning himself to join Johnny's crew instead. And so, when the loudmouth Ralph Cifaretto makes a joke about Jenny Sack's weight, Polly rats him out to Johnny. Johnny becomes enraged by the disrespect, and demands that Carmine allow him to kill Ralph. But Carmine refuses. Instead, Johnny must take matters into his own hands. Realizing his underboss has become reckless and emotional, Carmine gives Tony the go-ahead to have Johnny Sack killed. Fortunately, Johnny comes to his senses and calls off the hit on Ralph, creating an uneasy peace once again. Meanwhile, Ralph is continuing his new relationship with Janice who soon realizes that she deserves better than this erratic and violent man, and kicks him to the curb. Ralph then buys a racehorse named Pi Oh My, who Tony also takes an active investment in, both financially and emotionally. Ralph's young son Justin is then seriously injured in an accident, leading to massive medical bills. When Pi Oh My is killed in a fire, Tony becomes deeply saddened and suspects that Ralph may have caused the fire to collect the insurance money. Furious at Ralph for killing the innocent horse, Tony flies into a fit of rage and murders him. With Ralph dead, his second-in-command Vito becomes the new captain of their crew. Meanwhile, Junior Soprano's case is deemed a mistrial, and he begins to suffer from dementia. Bobby Bacala steps up to be his primary caretaker, which earns him more respect and higher responsibilities from Tony. When Bobby's wife Karen is killed in a car accident, Janice quickly swoops in to comfort him. Feeling lonely and wanting his children to have a mother, Bobby eventually gives in to Janice's advances and the two begin a relationship. Christopher's fiancée Adriana is apprehended by the FBI, where they threaten to charge her with distributing heroin through her club if she didn't become an informant. With the promise of protection for herself and Christopher, a frightened Adriana agrees. As Adriana begins struggling with anxiety, Christopher works his way up the ranks of Tony's crew. Paranoid that he can't trust anyone, Tony decides to mold Christopher as his successor, as he was the only person Tony could trust. Tony sends Christopher to kill a dirty cop, supposedly the man responsible for the death of Christopher's father, Dickie. Tony also names Christopher a captain while Polly is in prison. But despite Christopher's successes, he falls deeper into his heroin addiction, eventually forcing Tony to stage an intervention and send him to rehab. Meanwhile, Tony's home life begins to completely fall apart. Feeling neglected by her husband, Carmela begins an emotional affair with one of Tony's most loyal soldiers, Furio. Eventually, Furio realizes the danger flirting with the boss's wife poses, and flees the country to return to Italy. Tony's vengeful ex-Gumar Irina then calls Carmela, 
detailing not only her own relationship with Tony, but also his relationship with her cousin Svetlana. This news is the final straw for Carmela, who kicks Tony out of their family home and asks for a divorce. As the season comes to a close, a newly free from prison Polly discovers that there is actually no place for him in the New York family and reaffirms his loyalty to Tony. As Johnny Sack grows tired of waiting for Carmine to die so that he can become the new boss, he offers Tony a deal to help murder Carmine. Tony, suspicious of Johnny's intentions, refuses the offer, putting a serious strain on their business relationship. In Season 5 of The Sopranos, several associates from the various mob families are released after years in prison. Those released include DeMeo Capo Feach Lamana, Lupertazzi Capo Phil Leotardo and Consigliere Angelo Gareppi, and Tony's cousin Tony Blendetto. Tony B. had been arrested as a young man during a truck hijacking gone wrong. Tony Soprano feels a lot of guilt for not being there on the night of the hijacking due to having a panic attack, and now feels indebted to his cousin. Despite Tony's offer to bring Tony B. into the family business, the newly released Tony B. maintains his desire to live a crime-free life and begins working toward opening his own massage parlor. Unfortunately, the financial stresses of life and an unchecked anger problem lead Tony B. back into his cousin's arms, desperate to find ways to earn more money. This newly reforged bond between the Tonys upsets Christopher, who suddenly becomes a third wheel. Both Tonys mock Christopher's new clean lifestyle, leading him to struggle with his sobriety. When a couple of drug dealers murder someone at Adriana's club, the FBI tighten their grip on her and pressure her to wear a wire to obtain incriminating evidence against Tony Soprano. Adriana, devolving into a nervous wreck, finally confesses to Christopher that she has been forced into turning into an informant. Despite begging Christopher to run away with her, a devastated Christopher instead alerts Tony to Adriana's betrayal. And so, Tony orders Silvio Dante to murder Adriana. Meanwhile, a newly single Tony Soprano moves into his mother's old house with the also recently separated Artie Bucco. Following her and Tony's separation, Carmela faces the brunt of AJ and Meadow's frustrations. Eventually, Tony and Carmela reconcile, with Tony promising to be a better husband and to remain faithful. Tony also gets Meadow's new boyfriend Finn a summer job working at a construction site run by Vito Spatafore. When Finn accidentally catches Vito in a sexual relationship with another man, Finn quits the job and wants to flee to California. When Meadow becomes distraught that Finn would leave her so abruptly, he instead decides to stay in New Jersey and the two get engaged. Meanwhile, Carmine Lupertazzi dies of a stroke, leaving Johnny Sack ready to take on leadership. Unfortunately for him, Carmine's son Little Carmine makes his own claim for boss. Tony Soprano is caught in the middle of the escalating fight for power, which includes Johnny Sack ordering the deaths of many of Little Carmine's most loyal associates. In retaliation, Angelo hires prison friend Tony B to murder Johnny Sack's close friend Joey Peeps. And in another act of retaliation, Johnny Sack orders Phil Leotardo and his brother Billy to murder Angelo. Distraught over his friend's death, Tony B goes on a solo revenge mission of his own, opening fire on Phil and Billy. Billy is killed and Tony B goes on the run, with Phil demanding his head and threatening to take action against the entire New Jersey family if Tony didn't comply. With no other choice, Tony Soprano tracks down his cousin and murders him himself, so as to avoid a prolonged and torturous death at the hands of Phil Leotardo. While Phil is furious that he couldn't kill Tony B himself, Johnny Sack keeps him in line. Following the bloodshed, Little Carmine steps back to allow Johnny to be named the new acting boss. As Tony and Johnny meet to reconcile their business relationship, the FBI arrive to arrest Johnny Sack for his years of criminal activities. In Season 6 of The Sopranos, as Junior Soprano's dementia worsens, he accidentally shoots his nephew Tony. Tony then falls into a coma, with doctors uncertain if he will survive. As a comatose Tony has visions of a life away from the Mafia, his family and friends are forced to contemplate a life without him. Silvio is the new acting boss, but quickly realizes the stress is too much for him and he's better served as a consigliere. Polly and Vito meanwhile debate whether or not their earnings should still go to Carmela or if they should keep them for themselves. 
Eventually, Tony makes a miraculous recovery and has a new outlook on life, where every day is a gift. But that new positive attitude doesn't last long, as the realities of being a crime boss quickly reveal themselves once again. Rumors of Vito Spadafore's sexuality begin to spread amongst the New York and New Jersey families after he is spotted in a gay nightclub. Meadows' fiancé Finn confirms these rumors to Tony, who is conflicted on how to handle the issue. The homophobic Phil Leotardo demands that Tony have Vito killed, as Vito is married to Phil's cousin. As Tony debates his options, knowing Vito was a loyal and efficient earner, Phil takes matters into his own hands and murders Vito himself. Tony's crew are all angered by this act, and when one of Phil's crew begins mocking Vito, Silvio kills him, putting the New Jersey and New York families on the verge of a war. Christopher Moltisanti experiences several major life updates. His new girlfriend Kelly gets pregnant, so the two get married and eventually have a daughter named Caitlin. Christopher also gets some help from Little Carmine in producing his first movie, Cleaver, which draws many inspirations from his actual life. But despite these successes, Christopher continues to slip back into his drug addiction. Meanwhile, Tony Soprano's new lease on life quickly runs out and he grows overly temperamental and paranoid. He begins questioning Polly's past affiliation with the Lupertazzi family and begins to doubt his loyalty to the point of nearly having him killed. When Tony and Christopher get into a car accident due to Christopher's drug use, Tony finally snaps, suffocating his nephew to stage his death as being caused by the wreck. A remorseless Tony later justifies his actions as being necessary to protect the baby Caitlin from her father's recklessness. Meanwhile, Meadow breaks up with Finn and becomes engaged to Philly Parisi's son Patrick, while AJ's mental health continues to deteriorate which Tony blames himself for. At one of his lowest points, Tony turns to Dr. Melfi for help. Dr. Melfi's own therapist, Elliot, warns her of a new medical study that suggests Tony might be using talk therapy as a tool to excuse his actions and practice his manipulative behavior. And so, Dr. Melfi drops Tony as a patient for good. When Johnny Sack dies in prison from lung cancer, Phil Leotardo is made the new boss of the Lupertazzi family. Phil has had enough of Tony Soprano and begins trying to strong-arm new deals between the crime families that would benefit his crew. When a Lupertazzi soldier harasses Meadow in an attempt to scare Tony into accepting the new deal, Tony finally snaps and brutally assaults the man. This prompts Phil to officially declare war against New Jersey, ordering the deaths of Tony and all of his top men. Bobby Bacala is murdered, Silvio Dante is left comatose and expected to never recover, and Tony goes into hiding with the surviving members of his crew. As the war escalates, Phil's closest men begin to doubt his leadership, and agree to a truce with Tony if Phil is killed. FBI agent Harris, who has grown begrudgingly close to Tony after years of investigation, tips Tony off to Phil's location. And so Tony's men find Phil and murder him, putting an end to the war. Though the war is over, Tony still can't rest easy, as he soon learns that another of his crew have turned informant, and that Tony would soon be indicted. As Tony takes restock of his life, he makes amends with Polly and places him in charge of the old April crew, finally forgives Junior for shooting him, ensures Bobby's children will be taken care of financially, and gets AJ a new job to pull him out of his emotional rut. As the series comes to a close, Tony Carmella and AJ Soprano sit at a diner to have dinner as a family. As they wait for Meadow to arrive, Tony takes stock of his surroundings, condemned to a lifetime of looking over his shoulder for any would-be threat. Just as Meadow prepares to enter the diner, a stranger walks past Tony and into the diner's bathroom. As the diner's door opens, the bell dings, Tony looks up, and the series cuts to black. Whether it be at this moment in the diner, or decades later due to a sad, slow decline like Junior, there is nothing the all-powerful Tony Soprano can do to prevent his inevitable end.